Hello and welcome to Reality Check. I'm Xu Qinduo. One of the pressing questions at the Shangri-La Dialogue has been if there will be a physical meeting between Chinese Defense Minister Li Shangfu and his U.S. counterpart Lord Austin. Though they did shake hands and greet each other briefly at the opening dinner, Washington has pointed the finger at China for lacking the willingness to engage. This reveals some deeply rooted problems of U.S. policy and practices. For example, shouldn't the countries conduct diplomacy based on equality and mutual respect? I'm sure a few countries would say no, as this is international diplomacy 101. So how can the U.S. expect China to agree to dialogue with the American defense chief while the U.S. is imposing restrictive measures on Chinese individuals, including the defense minister himself? The U.S. has made so much fuss over the episode that the Chinese defense minister felt compelled to respond. Every sovereign nation understands the importance of such a basic and fundamental principle. President Joe Biden himself addressed lifting the sanctions so the two defense ministers can meet and talk. Here's Biden being asked about this on the sidelines of the recently concluded G7 summit. No, I know that. That's under negotiation right now. But then the U.S. backtracked, saying there's no plan to lift sanctions. The obvious conclusion is that the U.S. doesn't seem to be motivated for a formal meeting between the two defense ministers at the Shangri-La Dialogue, and the lack of a formal communication between the two arguably most powerful militaries comes from U.S. unwillingness to engage, not China's. If the U.S. won't remove obstacles for bad communication with China, then why the urgent messaging that the right time to talk is now? It seems almost like a pretense, if not outright hypocrisy. The lack of mutual respect and the mutual equality can unfortunately be seen everywhere in U.S. practices. For example, the vague term rules-based international order is by nature a self-serving practice with little respect for other sovereign states. When it comes to the Ukraine crisis, the U.S. stresses the importance of sovereignty and territorial integrity. But on the Taiwan question, it somehow never mentions Chinese territorial integrity. Its punitive economic restrictions are called sanctions, but actions by others are dubbed economic coercion. And when China built the Tiangong Space Station after NASA rejected an offer of Chinese cooperation on the International Space Station, NASA head Bill Nelson attacked China for building its own station. The list goes on and on. Such practices are so hard to justify that even Americans find them too ridiculous to accept. Mutual respect and equality are features of the Chinese initiative of global security, the focal topic of the Shangri-La Dialogue. The Chinese initiative 强加于人, Contrary to the practice of U.S. forming security camps like AUKS and the Quad, which often divide and destabilize a region, the Chinese security concept focuses instead on inclusiveness, taking into consideration the security concerns of everyone involved. The practice of respect and equality has likely played a role in China's global diplomacy. For example, China has become a major trading partner of over 140 countries and regions. Security-wise, China's efforts are also winning international support. Following the successful mediation for the rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran, China's peace proposal for the Ukraine crisis was widely lauded among the Global South in particular. Maybe if the U.S. treated others with equality and respect, global security might not be such a pressing concern, and simple open dialogue could replace pretense and false accusations. <laughs>